In this opportunity, we will give an introduction to the member end releases. And what are the member end releases? In most analysis software, it is required to define the end conditions of every member so that they can reflect more accurately the actual connection of the member. By default, all member connections are set to act as completely rigid, meaning that forces and moments are transferred to the rest of the structure. A common example where a user may want to assign a member end release is when it is required modeling a non-rigid connection. In SFRAME, the user can assign end releases using the graphical user interface or the spreadsheets window. By looking at the spreadsheet window, this information is available in, this, in the member spreadsheet. So you will see something similar to the below, and each member will show its release condition in FX, the actual force release condition at each end of your member. And that's why you see a condition for the member nodes, I and J. In this case, it's set as fix fix by default for each element, meaning that it will transfer any possible actual loads from the demands to the other elements connected at both ends. MX, the x-axis rotation release, which is about the end of your member. And of course, this is with respect to the element coordinate system. Basically, this will allow rotation about the member's own axis in case it is not fixed. And MY and MZ is the Y and Z axis rotation release about the ends of the member. You may also notice a drop down menu on each of these columns, all of them giving four options for the I and J node of your member. The way I like to see it is as follows. Whenever you read the word pin, this means it is released at the member's end. And whenever you read fix, this will mean the member end is not released. So pin pin means that both ends at each member end are released. Fix fix both nodes are not released. And this is the default configuration for any new member defined in SFRAME. Fix pin, the I node is not released, but the J node is. And pin fix, the I node is released, but the J node isn't. Now users may define a sign member end releases in the graphical user interface, also called GUI, by using the member release tool in the geometry window which has the icon that you guys see here at the top. When assigned to member ends, the releases are indicated by small arcs, as you can see in the screenshot below. In this case, there is at least one release assigned to both member ends of this member at the top, and at least one release at both ends of the shorter column on the right. You may see many nodes, but please bear in mind that this model is built by using physical member modeling meaning that those nodes you see are part of the same member. You can always turn on the Shrink Element for Visual Checks tool, which is located at the bottom of your SFRAME window in the status bar. And it has this icon you see here that looks like a couple of yellow rulers. And here's what you will see with this command turn on. You notice the small arcs and the members start and end nodes. In any case, you're not familiar with physical member modeling, we have a couple of recordings with a proper introduction plus some examples when comparing to analytical member modeling in the internal LSFRAME health system. To have a more informative view of these releases in 3D, we can always turn on that option in Options, Releases, and now we can see more clearly what releases are being assigned to our members. We see a double-headed arrow, meaning rotation, in the Y and Z local axis at each member's end, meaning that the beam member at the top is released at both ends. In other words, it has a pin-pin connection, as you can see in the screenshot above that image. Uh, this is showing the member spreadsheet window. As a note, we should always double check the member's local axis, because by knowing the direction of the positive x local axis, we know which is the i and j node. With all this set, Let's focus our attention at some case scenarios for member end releases for this model, specifically for the top beam. This is a portal frame composed by three members, where the local axis of each member is shown in blue. Let's begin with the most common case scenario in which we release moments about Y and Z. 
Possible scenarios can be a combination of the following. MY and MZ are both pin-pin, and the other releases, FX and MX, stay fix-fix. By the way, if you're wondering about FY and FZ, those are always fixed. As we know, this means that both ends are released from transferring moments in MY and MZ to the other elements that are connected to this beam. So as we mentioned, FX, F FY, FZ, and MX will get transferred from both ends of the beam to the columns. And MY and MZ are released at both ends of the beam. Another case will be MY and MZ set as pin fix. And the remaining releases, FX and MX, stay fix fix. As we know, this means that the I node is released from transferring moments in MY and MZ to the left column that is connected to this beam. FX, FY, FZ, and MX will get transferred from the I node of the beam to the left column. And all forces and moments will get transferred from the J node of the beam to the right column. Another case is if MY is set as pin pin and the remaining releases stay fix fix. FX, F, FY, FZ, MX, and MZ will get transferred from both ends of the beams to the columns. And MY is being released at both ends of the beam. Uh, one last case scenario we have where we have MY set as pin fix and MZ set as fix pin. And the remaining releases stay fix fix. FX, FY, FZ, MX, and MZ will get transferred from the I node of the beam to the left column. FX, FY, FZ, MX, and MY will get transferred from the J node of the beam to the right column. Basically, MY is released at the I node and MZ is released at the J node. Now we come to the first case that can cause trouble, the release of action in the X direction. This should always be set as fix fix, unless in the actual structure, the member is free to move in X direction as either in the I node or the J node, but not both. Even though it is connected to the rest of the structure as shown here. FX set as fixed pin. All forces and moments will be transferred from the I node to the left column, but FY, FZ, and the moments in every direction will get transferred from the J node to the right column. If the FX release conditions were reversed as pin fix, then the above two statements uh, will be reversed. Another case where the FX is released at both ends of the beam. Basically, FY, FZ, and the remaining moments will get transferred from both nodes to the columns, but the member is free to move now in the X direction. There is nothing holding in its place. For, uh, for sure, we'll get a solver diagnostic message implying some structure instability that needs to be fixed. In the case of MX, similar to the discussion we have for FX, also applies to the moment in X. The releases of torsion about the member's X axis can cause trouble as well. And in general, we should leave this alone as fix fix, unless the member is truly releasing torsion about its X axis at one of the nodes, but never both. If MX is released at both ends, FX, FY, all the forces and MY and MZ will get transferred from both nodes to the columns. But the member is free to spin about this x-axis. There is nothing preventing it from doing so. And we will get some sober diagnostic message implying a structural instability that needs to be addressed. And finally, all forces and moments will get transferred from both ends of the beam to the columns if everything is set as fixed fix. In most cases, this is the expected behavior when transferring forces and moments to adjacent objects, supports, shells, trusses, beams, etc.